The Lord said in the last days that he will put his spirit on young men that look just like him, that look just like me, that look just like you. And we will change the mindset of our community with his word, not with economics, not with money, not with your false conception of free will, because free will got the west side looking like the west side look. Bring it up. Free will got the south side looking like the south side look. Free will got all these division amongst all these young men who come from the same man. Bring it up. We come from the nation of Israel, but we keep dividing ourselves up into sections. We keep dividing ourselves up into blocks. We keep dividing ourselves up in religion. Why? Because the vilest men are exalted. Look around in Chicago today. Look around in Illinois. Look around in the United States. Look around in the world. What type of men are held to high esteem? Think, think about R. Kelly. For a long time, he was accused of messing with little girls. But he didn't get caught up for it, did he? They put him on high. They continued to promote this brother. Like they did Bill Cosby. Like they did Bill Cosby, right? They put him on high. They esteemed this man as somebody great. Okay, look at our neighborhoods. Are the trap boys esteemed or are they looked down upon? Do our little boys want to be like them and grow up and be dope boys or do they want to grow up and be doctors? Who are esteemed in the world? They are the truth. Who esteemed? Meaning, who gets the most glory? The wicked, right? Or the vilest men? Read that one more time. The wicked walk on every side. The wicked is walking on every side in Chicago. Everybody's going about their own mindset, right? And that mindset tells them that Christ is a white man. I want you to give me Matthew 24 and 5. That's After you read that, up. continue to read that. That's a black man. Read. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. When the vilest men are exalted, the lowest men, right? If I if I love you, right, would I do something to harm you? If I love you, would I do anything to harm you? If I seen God in you, would I do anything to harm you? No. No, but that type of person is exalted in the neighborhood. Yeah. Like you know, everybody know the shooters. Yeah. yeah. Why are the shooters still walking? Bring it up. Everybody knows the dope boys. Why is they still walking? Because we esteem them to a level in their wickedness where we refuse to touch them. We refuse to tell them, hey, it's time to change. The Lord said in the last days that he will put his spirit on young men that look just like him, right. that look just like me, that look just like you. Right. And we will change the mindset of our community with his word. Not with economics, not with money, not with your false conception of free will, because free will got the west side looking like the west side look. Bring it up. Free will got the south side looking like the south side look. Free will got all these division amongst all these young men who come from the same man. Bring it up. We come from the nation of Israel, but we keep dividing ourselves up into sections. We keep dividing ourselves up into blocks. We keep dividing ourselves up in religion. Why? Because the vilest men are exalted. Bring it out! We exalt Barack Obama. What has he done for our community? Bring it out! The only thing he's done was made this more acceptable. Pass laws so you can't say anything regarding them. That's a foul thing. Read. That was against Obama. Matthew 24. Say it again. They was against Obama. The days of Noah. They used them. When they used them for their purpose. Yeah, when he was in office and all that. But our people big him up. Like he was exactly. the second coming of Christ. Some people even call him the savior. Yeah. He ain't saved nothing. Bring it up. Let's read. Bring it out. The book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 5. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. This is where the confusion come from. This is where that vowed man was exalted. This is how you exalt that vile man. Read it again. This is Christ speaking, by the way. This is what? Read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So the Lord said there's going to be a deceiver that's coming. He's going to tell people who he ain't. He's going to tell people, look, I'm who you think I am. 
They looked at this white man right here and said, that's Christ. And they honor that man. They that's honor that man. That's a that's foul not, man. That man him. was a real man that lived in this earth. That's not even him. You understand that? Do you understand what his doctrine brings? His doctrine brings all nations are equal. Bring it up. When the Lord said that the children of Israel, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians are above all nations. That's, that's right. right. He said that there's rules you must follow in order to get to the kingdom of heaven. Because at the end of the day, we want to get to the kingdom of heaven, right? Right? Y'all want to pass a, a, a better place to your children than what was given to you, right? You want to make sure when you leave, you did everything possible so that your seed can continue to flourish and thrive, right? Right? So there's rules to do that. And if we're not doing that, we're going to continue this cycle that we're living in now. That's why we're here. We had to change and break that cycle. But he came with another doctrine. Read it again. Christ warned us. For many shall come in my name. Many came. Say, I am Christ. You see this? Man-made religions. Look at that. John Smith created the Baptist religion in 1608. That has nothing to do with our people. Our people should not be subscribing to the Baptist faith or the Baptist uh, religion. John Smith, Mormon, 1830. That's a new thing in this earth. Ellen G. White, Seventh-day Adventist. Charles T. Russell, Jehovah's Witness, 1872. You see that? Pentecost, 1901. Where's our people at during these times? In the 1600s. In the early 1800s. Where was our people at? Who got a clue? Hey, check this out right here. What was we doing in the 1600s? In the 1800s? How did we get here into this country? You know, did they teach you your history? How old are you, 18? Yeah, 19. You're 19? They taught you your history on how your people got here? So now we're how was our people brought here to America? Uh, on a boat. On a boat, right. We were brought here on a boat. And what were we doing when we got off those boats? Did we come over here for a vacation? Did we, did we laugh? Did we chill? What, what happened? We were forced over here. So we was dragged, we was drug over here against our will. To serve what? We worked for free. We served slavery, right? Right. We were brought over here. During those times, those religions was created. The Baptist faith, the most common faith amongst our people, the Baptist religion, created in the 1600s. Look at that, 1608. He read the Bible and he found out that it had nothing to do with him. He understood that it was a powerful book and he tried to use it to do what? To control our people, to keep them as docile slaves. But once you read this Bible in its entirety, once you read this Bible with understanding, guess what happens? It shows you how to wake up. Read that again. It shows our people how to wake up and come from squalor. After you read that, I want you to go to Isaiah. Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 5. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. Many shall come saying, I am Christ. A lot of people did that, read. And shall deceive many. So many people have been deceived. The Christ we know on the earth, a lot of people say he white, right? Do anybody know Christ or do the majority of the people know Christ to be black? You know? Majority of people don't. But they know him to be white. And so that deception is in the earth. The Lord tried to warn us about it before it happened. So when it happened, you can look back and say, hey, there's something to that book. Give me 51 in the last verse. Isaiah 51. It because it's a second time. It's a time. For us to do something important. Alright? I want you men to keep patient. Stay patient. Alright? Because if you're patient, you're going to learn something. But if you're too busy to stand here and listen to the word of God, life's going to be hard for you. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 23. You, you got time, sis. Hey, sis, you got time. You got time, sis. Come on, listen to the word of God. Watch this. Read. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflicted thee, which have said to thy soul, Bow down that we may go over. Listen, it was told to the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, it was told to us, Bow down. Bow down. You are a boy, you're a grown man, 40, 30 years old. But they make you shave your beard so you can look like a boy. Bring it up. Bow down. Don't, pro don't project yourself as being the male. Bow down. Do not raise your son in the image of God, the God that he is. Bow down. Get out the house, go sell drugs. I'm going to make it so hard for you where your household ain't going to stand. 
You're getting walked over. Our people are being walked over as we speak. It's time for us to stand up and wake up and realize that. Read. Bow down that we may go over. Bow down so that another nation can go over you. Bow down so that what happened right here can profit another nation. We didn't profit from this. Read. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground. We've laid our body as the ground. We can't get no lower than where we at now. Bring it we strung out on drugs. We study in and out of prisons. We have to do illegal things just to make ends meet. Bring Some of up. us. We may have a small amount of us that have actually made it, but it's hard for some reason for them to come back and lift us out of this condition we in. Why? Because they face the oppression too. You ever heard about Oprah Winfrey going over to Paris and they told her, nigga, I don't want you shopping in this store. You, you, it don't matter what your financial status is, you still in their eyes for nigga. That's right. We low. We low. Read. At the end that we still a nigga, man. At the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because we project that. We still in that mindset. We haven't stood up. We still right here at this verse. Right here, read. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street. We laid our body as the ground and as the street because we refuse to hearken into the voice of our God. We refuse to solve conflict by talking it out. The only way our people know how to resolve conflict is to be at odds with one another. Go on social media yeah. and vent. Talk to one of their homies about the situation and vent. And let their homie pump them up to go do something about it. Instead of talking it out. Bring it out. You talk it out, you get to live another day. You might even could be able to build with that person at the end of it. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe the next month. But y'all could build. But if you take them out, you take out one of your opportunities to come out of poverty. That's right. To come out of a negative mindset. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 1. Read. Awake! Awake! It's time to awake! It's time for you so-called blacks on the west side. It's time to awake! Read. Awake! Awake! Put on thy strength! You oh. so-called Hispanics, it's time to awake! Put on your strength! Read. Oh, Zion! You are, you are the children of Zion. Read. Put on thy beautiful garment. Put your beautiful garments on. Read. Oh, Jerusalem, the holy city. You are the holy city. The Lord calls you a holy city. Give me Ephesians 6. Let's see what we should awake and put on. I think it started, what, 12, 13? The garment that we have to put on. The Lord just said, awake. Put on the holy garment. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Read. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So these are your beautiful garments that the Lord told you to put on back in Isaiah. Read. So, so you can do what? Stand against what? That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because, believe it or not, the fight that we're fighting right now is not a physical fight. You're not picking up no arms or going against any man to do what? To get yourself out of the conditions we in. We're in a spiritual fight. There's tricks being played over your head that you can't even see. Bring it There's up. tricks being played by paper and pen that you can't even fight against. That's right. Bring it up. Do you understand that? The Lord has made this nation mighty to oppress you so that you can see something wrong and be like, let me come back to my God. Because right now we turn all the way away from the Lord. And the Lord trying to get our attention. He want to fight for us. But we got to first fight for ourselves. That's right. We got to put on the armor of God. We got to put on these beautiful garments. We got to make each other strong, brother. Brick, that's right. Read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You hear that? We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So you need to be equipped with the thing that's going to allow you or help you fight. Read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Principalities. Read. Against powers. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. This world is being ruled by the violent or the wicked men. I don't know if you walked up yet, but we talked about the men that run this earth. Or the men that gets promoted in this earth. Or the men that's looked upon or esteemed as great in this earth. And the Bible said that they are the wicked. Or vile men. Or men that refuse to hearken to God. Are you a vile or a wicked man? Do you like instruction? No. Do you like instruction or do you like chaos? No. 
You understand what the armor of God is? Come on, let's continue to read. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Take that, the whole armor of God. Keep reading. That ye may be able to stand against, to stand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So you have to, right now while we're living, prove to the Most High God that you are capable of running this earth. At the end of the day, that's our whole mission. Our whole mission is to take back this possession that was given to us. We'll never be able to rule this possession in righteousness if we don't get our mind right. Give a crackhead $20 million. What's going to happen with that $20 million? He's sick in the mind. He got a possession. He got a great possession that people will love to have, right? What's going to happen to that possession in a year? Shit, it's going to be over with. Maybe even before yeah, he, right, he he's said he gonna be, kill himself. He's gonna be over with. He's gonna, he gonna, he gonna give it away. He's gonna smoke it up. He's not gonna respect it. Unless he wanna get himself right. Because he's not right and he didn't do anything to earn it. Right. This earth is ours. We gotta get ourselves right. Bring it out. Do what it takes to earn this earth. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.